Hello everyone and welcome back to Cities by Steven. You're talking to Steven. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please hit that subscribe button. Get that bell notification on too, so you don't miss out on the next episode of Fort Prairie and Alberta Theme City. This is the first episode of the series, uh, besides the series preview that uh, premiered on Monday. So if you missed that and you want to check out the larger plans for the series um, and the map in general that we're building on, uh, it'll probably be in a tag relatively shortly or right around now, right up here in the right-hand corner. So, uh, what do we have planned for today's video? Well, we are gonna to try to hit the first two milestones of the city, and we're also gonna talk a bit about how I like to start my cities out. Um, in this case, we are going to be starting off by building a town, uh, and a town that's not going to develop too, too much into a city, because we plan on building the larger part of our city out over here in this peninsula type development over here by the river so this is going to be a town that we're going to be building to start off with it's going to be a railway town and it's going to probably remain that way for at least the time being um so if you missed last uh the, the premiere of the series the the series preview we checked out this map that we're going to be building on it is biomes valley which is from the new content creator pack uh it is absolutely stunning it's a perfect map for the setting of the series, which is set in so southwestern Alberta. And, uh, you know, it's called Biomes Valley. There's tons of different biomes. And all these biomes play very well into the theme of building in the prairies, uh, or at least on the, the edge of the Rocky Mountains, where we have some of the, perhaps the foothills of the Rockies. Anyways, let us dive into how we're going to start our series. So we, we're starting off at this trumpet interchange, this beautifully designed trumpet interchange that we don't really need to do too much to to bring up to uh, our goals with it. Um, there are a bit of lane mathematical uh, things with this, but that is due to the vanilla game. So perhaps when we get enough money, we can take this down to two lanes so that we have three lanes going our beginning with, one going off, so there's two remaining, and vice versa on all the other inter interchanges. And then also right away off of this, we have two lanes going into three, so we'll need to fix that right away. So the first thing we need to do, really, is to place down a road. It doesn't really matter what road you do. Uh, we're going to be just using the vanilla roads today, uh, just so that it's a shared experience for people who play on PC and on console. So pretty much what I like doing right away is just finding the minimum size road I can do, and then deleting it <laughs> right away. And why do I do that? Well, once you place a road, you unlock dirt roads. And dirt roads are very cheap to use, uh, and it's just uh, it's just it's just my way of playing. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how we're going to situate our little town. And the theme of this town is that it grew up along the Trans Canada Railway, uh, which is probably going to be this, or at least if it's not the Trans Canada Railway, perhaps it is an older railway and so a, an old railway town has set up a uh, shop along the rail line here so we're going to build uh, up the grid for an old railway town and i think that's a pretty good theme to start off with for this series so first things first i think we're going to remove these trees so i'm using the forest brush tool to remove these trees right here you can do it manually as well but you know we have some mods available to us so that's the first mod i'm going to showcase the forest brush tool you can uh, add trees, you can remove trees. I think I have the brush set up for our Ontario series. I haven't set one up yet. Yeah, there you go, Ontario, for our, our new series. All right, so my, my plans for this is to really, um, this town isn't gonna be that large. The reason why we're doing this today is because this railway throws a huge wrench in any future expansion off of this interchange. This interchange is relatively close to this rail line, so if we're going to build a realistic themed city like, we're, like we do in this channel, it's going to be very difficult to get over top or underneath this rail line. It's pretty close, and that slope is downwards or upwards. It's going to be pretty rough. If we were to do this here, we definitely need to redo the interchange, and I don't really want to do that. I don't really want to mess with the map too, too much. So what I'm thinking is that the main interchange it's probably gonna go right about in here or maybe on this curve here and that'll go right through into the city so this is going to 
kind of end up being a more secondary interchange. So when you're building a railway town, the town is not set up off of the highway grid. It is set up off of the railway grid. There's a couple different ways to do this, but I was looking at some old fashioned towns and we're going to start off by building the road network off of the railway line. The railway is relatively straight. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to about here, just rough estimate. And there's a couple ways I can do this. Like we can put a road right alongside of it. I'm just going to turn off uh, node snapping. And that is totally an acceptable thing to do. Tons of railways have a bit of a right of way alongside of them. So the cities tend to build roads right beside them because the city owns the land anyways. Or there's a method of doing this where you have buildings up against the rail lines. And this is the theme we're going to go with uh, in today's video. And the reason why is because we're going to get a train station in here eventually. And uh, I would like to have some space where we don't really need to delete too, too much. So that is about right. We only have three spaces in between the road and the rail. I think that's going to be okay. Perhaps I should have just called Mulligan on this one. And we're going to make sure that there is four in place. The reason why I prefer four in this situation is, I know there's a bit of a waste of money, but that's okay, is because I know we can get our power plants alongside the railway. railway. And uh, for the time being, that'll be a good place to put them. Oh, whoops. There we go. What the heck? Ah, because node snapping wasn't on. There we go. And we don't have anarchy on right now. So we'll bring this out to this node here. That's a-OK that's a -okay with me. And look at that, we haven't spent a lot of money at all. Uh, now we need to figure out how we're going to connect up with our highway here. Well, I'm thinking we get the road to come right in to here like this, where we have the uh, main uh, entrance onto the highway just coming right off down the main part of this town. The town is going to be around here. I would love it if we had this turn into the main street. I feel like that's really realistic to do. So that's what we're going to try to plan out. So we're just going to try to and find, there we go, uh, pretty much the middle. So if we go straight off of here, we don't exactly hit the middle. So I'm just going to move over a couple uh, grid markers here. And as you see, this isn't exactly even, but this is pretty close. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to click this in at right about here. And there we go. Next thing before we actually connect this up, I want to start planning out the next grid, the next level of the grid. And that is because I'm, uh, eventually we're going to delete this middle section here because I would love it if the main rail station was right along this main street here. So I think we're going to go with a six. Is that six? Yeah. A six square grid here. And let's go six by 12. How about that? So we'll go out 12 units. There we go. And then we are going to delete these parts right here. And this is because we're going to get the uh, train station through here. And I'm actually going to leave this here for now uh, because I think that'll be a nice connection to have for the time being. But uh, with future planning about having a train station right here, I think it'll be great we can kind of have a bit of a bump out into here and we can have the train station really centered off in this whole area. So let's bring it out another 12 units and then another 12 units. Okay, so that's going to be the main establishment of our grid for now, but we need to connect up to the highway here so that we can actually get people into our city, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to showcase a couple mods at the same time. We're going to delete those highway bits because we don't really need them. And instead, we're going to go in and grab the one-way two-lane road. And we're going to bring this to about here. Might be a bit too long. So let's just try and perhaps turning this off. I love it if we can just snap in right about here. That works with me. We're going to turn bending off here so that it's a nice, great connection. And then we're going to turn anarchy on anarchy is a mod on PC that allows you to pretty much build wherever you want. And it looks a, really, uh, looks a lot funky. I was going to say a little bit funky. It looks a lot funky right now, but that is because um, 
this road shouldn't happen in the game. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab an avenue, so a four lane avenue because we have two lanes from each and we're going to connect up from the dirt road into here. There we go. So we have a pretty funky situation happening right now. And what can we do to fix that? Well, we can use the node controller to fix that. Whoa, look at that, eh? Holy cow. So we're going to slope that node. We're going to grab this button right here. As you see, this kind of formed a bit of a triangle. We're going to swing this back down over here to really level out this node. And then we can really bring this one up a lot more. It's not... Yeah, we have some room there to, to squeeze in some things in. We have... Uh, sorry, what we've left over is this large open space. Uh, if you're new to the game, nodes are where cars tend to change, or tend to, it's where they do change lanes. Um, so it's important to have large space, especially in this situation. So that's the node controller. We sloped the node. Uh, we moved them back a little bit, we can move them forward too. But, um, oh, I just made a bit of an error there, apparently. There we go. Uh, but now we've created this nice open space, but how do you get rid of these crosswalks? Well, you need to go into Traffic Manager Present Edition and click the node. It's funny that the node's over here. And we're going to just uh, remove these crosswalks. There we go. We're going to do the same thing by clicking these nodes as well. There's no actual crosswalk here. That's just the game telling me that there would be normally. So why don't we just go back into Node Controller. We're going to slope these nodes as well. There we go. So we have a much more smooth transition area over here. We could also look at moving these a bit more. I'm not going to play with the interchange too, too much today. I think that'll be in a future video. Fantastic. So now we've left ourselves quite the blank uh, space over here. So how do we fill that in to make it look nice? Well, we're going to use the intersection marking tool. Uh, if you hold shift, it creates solid lines. If you don't hold shift while doing this, you get dash lines. So I'm just showcasing a couple of these mods right now um, because these are mods that we're going to be using a lot in the series. If you hold alt and you go to these little red dots, you get to create a filler. And one thing you can do is you can have these lines here, but if you're doing a big highway thing like this, what I prefer to do is to do pavement and it looks a bit more realistic. You can also change the coloring as well, but we won't do that. And there's something I missed while we were in Traffic President, and that is to lock in the direction directionality of these nodes. It's not necessary, but I think it would be necessary if you were to do that right here. Okay, so we have two lanes going into one. That's going to be a problem for first little while, but we're not going to spend the money to upgrade this entire road like this. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to plan for that eventuality. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the picker mod here, which just allows me to click this and then click anything I want, and I'll pop right up on my cursor here. We're going to just upgrade one section. Alrighty, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our rural road here. And we're going to plan out the grid from this starting point. Uh, we're just going to do a bit of grid, grid building. Uh, just the main one block out from this main road here. Um, so just because we've established this as six, it doesn't mean that the rest of the town needs to be that, uh, that grid length. So we know that there's a road over here. That might not have been the best selection uh, because uh, it's gonna be fine but uh, we're going to bump it out and then when we will see it from building this road out to here uh, let's turn node snapping on so you see how whoops uh, with this dirt road here there is one less grid marker here that is because these ones are one, these roads, these four lane roads are one grid like larger than these ones. So by doing this, what we've done is we've created one space of unzonable land. And that's gonna be A-OK -okay with me, but if you're looking to maximize uh, the build, then it, you probably wanna make sure that you uh, have no gap here. 
but I'm planning on having commercial zoning and residential zoning back to back. And having this one space here is totally okay because you can run a fence along the back of it. Or what you can do is you can just look at filling in the grid with your other road here. So that's what we're gonna do for this instance right here. Okay, I think we're good on that end. I shouldn't have drawn that road out, but that's okay. And uh, let's just do one more. All right. And then I might look at doubling it entirely. So we know this is eight. So let's go uh, through 16 here. Or not doubling it, sorry, 1.5, that's what I meant. If that doesn't make sense to you, it makes sense to me, and I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, what I did was, uh, so instead of eight, uh, this is now, yeah, it's 16. That makes sense. Yeah, so now technically I could throw a road in here and it will fill in the, the gaps here, but I'm gonna leave it open uh, for a bit of change of pace here. So then that means right here, we need to fill this in and then we're back on our normal grid. So you notice how this happened here. We have a bit of a crossing over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into node controller, we're gonna click it and we're gonna change this to a middle node. And there we go, because I don't really want cars connecting. I don't really want, sorry, I don't really want a junction right here. I want this whole zone from this intersection into here, for people to be able to focus on changing lanes onto the highway because we split them right here, right? Something to think about. So we've established a pretty nice looking grid here. Uh, we can always just extend it out just a touch more. We're gonna follow the same pattern. Now it doesn't, you also, by doing a pattern like this, it also means that you can kind of play with it. You don't have to build a road in some instances, you can remove it, you can uh, add an extra road in, say that if we want this uh, middle road right here, we can. Uh, and then just leave the uh, these ones blank. Allows you a lot of things to play with. All right, and then I really like the idea of having a smaller grid just closer to the rail line over here. So this way we've built a uh, quite a bit without actually gaining any revenue at all. And we've been playing with the sim on. If you'd like, you can pause it and you don't lose any money. But we need we want to encourage people to move in here now that now that we've established our town. So what we're going to start off with doing is planning out our zoning. So I'm thinking what we do is I think an industrial center over on this side makes a lot of sense because if we're going to get our main train station in this area right here, just click this for now, right around here, uh, perhaps that passenger rail station was at one point a cargo station. And maybe we actually just leave it as a cargo station, I don't know. But uh, I would think that the cargo rail would be uh, moved down here eventually uh, after the town has started to grow up a little bit. So we're gonna have our industry set on this side and we're gonna have most of a residential over here where I would deem um, this area to be prime residential expansion. And that'll also blend well to potentially other industries in the future. We're gonna keep our uh, commercial along the main streets. So uh, we said we wanted our industry right alongside of the rail line here. So we're gonna start off by building some nice infrastructure over, the, over on this side. Here's the main road here. And I would like to have residential right through. Yes, so this is the main road. It's gonna be bumped out one. So then it's one, two, three, four for, for commercial. And we could just throw this in through here or we can leave it blank. I think we'll leave it blank for now. And once this comes through, we'll do some uh, commercial and residential blending. Um, okay, this is the first junction of the town. So I think we can, whoops build something like this. And we're just gonna get some nice zoning through here to start off with, and then let's get our commercial. So I'm expecting this commercial zoning here to eventually just be removed because we're going to eventually expand it and that's okay with me. So we're gonna leave this part blank. 
And we're just gonna pretty much just zone a bunch right now. We're gonna let it zone, or we're gonna let it come uh, come in first. So I think we can zone that whole block as commercial. Don't really mind. Um, and then we also leave ourselves some spots over here for some residential expansion. But I, would, I think this block here might be the limit of that because you don't wanna get residential too, too close to your industrial. So that is some small planning at the moment. But let us think about power and water. Well, to start out with, unfortunately, for the green person in, in me, coal power plant is the way to start off with in this game. Uh, it's cheaper than any other function. Oh, look at that. It's five wide, eh? Okay, well, looks like we're going to be building it over on this side. Let us just decide to expand this a bit farther. We're going to build out the city just a touch more on this side. So, what was this again? This was 12 units. That doesn't look the same. Oh, I guess so. Alrighty. Uh, let's then grab our power here. I'm going to throw it right in here for now. So I am playing with a mod on that allows us to not require power lines. So it's theoretical, the roads have power lines on them. All right, so we're just gonna let this all come in and then we're going to look at grabbing some water. So where would you want your water tower in a city? Well, you want the water tower in an elevated place. So the thing is, we don't really have elevation in the city. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna put this on three speed so we start getting some growth. One place that cities tend to place water towers is in parks. So if we look at our zoning here, where could a park theoretically be? Well, it could be in a central block like this. The train stations are, uh, are gonna be over here. Well, let's pause the game because people are requesting water. Or, you know, it could be right off the bat in a really central location. Uh, to kind of welcome people into the city or usually what I find when I'm driving through small towns like this is that a nice park is one block off of the main road. So let us try and find a place that we could build a future park. I'm thinking right over here. So you come off the highway here, we're going to split traffic and let us, that's 10 units, right? No, that's eight. Okay. So let's go out eight units. It's right here. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, we'll just bring, we'll just delete this part right here for now. Uh, so I'm thinking a future park could be very well placed right here. So let us get a water tower. Uh, where would this water tower be? Well, we start having some elevation over here. So I think we can throw the water tower right in this corner. And then now we can start piping our city. So let's put this underneath the road here. Bring this pipe all the way down into here. And we can do the same. Okay, I'm um, just trying to maximize our uh, water for now. I think that should be good for now. And since we have water availability, the water needs to go somewhere in the sewers so we need some water treatment plants or what you can do is you can pull water from the river and push pump it back out into the water but what we're going to do is we are going to uh, do some water treatment and we're just going to try to utilize some of our industrial space that we have uh, for now and we're going to change it up down the road so uh, let's get one more grid out over here so we're going with the eight grid out on this part of the city. So how about we just kind of try and keep the water treatment relatively close to the rails. However, I don't think it should be that close for realism, but uh, eventually down the line, uh, we are definitely going to uh, create our own water treatment. All right. Like, a, sorry, a designated area. Fantastic. So we are losing money, but 
we're hoping that we can catch the perfect timing uh, with getting 500 people in the city so that we can uh, then get a nice boost in income here. We have lots of demand coming in. We are running out of money and it's totally normal to hit the negatives early on, especially with the amount of rows that we've planned out. Uh, and I did call a mulligan early on and deleted a pretty big road, but we should be a-okay. So we just, if we uh, take a quick peek, we can see uh, our demands over here. I think we're safe to say that we can zone that. And then that means we can also zone uh, over here. And I think we said we're going to bump this one farther out. There we go. Getting some people in now. Uh, and then we're also going to be zoning through here. Now I'm going to leave a gap for future road uh, expansion. Look at this. People are loving to live over here. They don't love living over here so much. <laughs> is that because there's no water over there? No, there's, there is water availability. Oh, we don't have enough money. I also did build quite a, a large amount of piping as well. Um, okay, so let us throw in some more industry. And this is also dirty industry. Uh, we can definitely change up how we plan our industry uh, shortly once we unlock that available that uh, uh, once we unlock that. Um, so one unfortunate thing right now is we don't have enough money to give water to these people. So we're gonna ask them to buy bottled water for the next little while until the city accrues enough tax income to to do this. <laughs> there we go, we're getting some cash. Uh, we're also about to hit 500 people, which is the first milestone. I think it's safe to say that we can probably look at building another road. Uh, these dirt roads don't cost too, too much. Um, and I think let's just bring a road. Oh, we definitely don't have enough money. Hey, there we go. So we did unlock the next level. So Little Hamlet is the first achievement, and we unlocked garbage, healthcare, and education. So personally, I have, and we also unlocked all of these, which you can read on screen. Personally, I have a little bit of a system here. Garbage is a requirement. You must place garbage once you unlock Little Hamlet. So we're going to throw down a landfill site. That should be good enough for the first little while. Then... We're going to play until we hit the next achievement, which is Worthy Village, where we unlock a new tile, we unlock districts and policies, and we also unlock fire and police. So I go garbage, fire, then police. That is the order of importance. And then healthcare and education would be next in whatever order you choose. So we're going to get to a thousand people. That is the next milestone. And hopefully we can get to that today. Um, and uh, meanwhile, uh, we're going to be unlocking a new tile now, but we are playing with the 81 tiles mod on this series. So why do I mention this? Well, I mention this because uh, I like using that as a bit of a guideline on when I can expand anyways. So while we're playing with the 81 tiles mod, we can still pretend like we're playing a little bit with uh, vanilla and, um, you know, unlocking tiles. So while the first tile is right here, roughly, uh, the next tile I think we would probably buy would probably be this one. So we'll look at grabbing that next. So we may see expansion down the rail line over here uh, first. Or perhaps we look at building some farming. Let me do that next. We shall see. Um, all right. So let us get some road networks in. There we go. And the reason why I wanted to build that road network is because I want to throw the pipe down that road. So we're going to go down to here. There we go. Fantastic. And we also uh, have created a bunch of new lots available over here. As you see, I've also changed the grid up a little bit um, because this grid is the maximum or maximized efficiency. And you'll often see that off once you start getting to like the third and fourth levels of the grid. 
as we start getting into maybe more modern expansion of this town. Alrighty, so uh, we have some residential demand, we have some industrial demand. It looks like we're almost out of industrial demands, but we still have a ton of residential demand availability. Or sorry, yeah, availability. That's the right word, Steven. <laughs> um, let's just keep expanding a bit over this way. Uh, and let's place our landfill. So the landfill, uh, you know, it really shouldn't be this close to town. We really should push it somewhere else. But there's not really a good location that's kind of screaming out to me at the moment. I don't really want to get it too close to the water. So perhaps we can look at placing down a temporary uh, landfill, which I think is a totally, totally fine thing to do. Um, again, just like in Brockton County, we're definitely going to get some dedicated zones for this, but uh, you know, the, start, the name of the game right now is making sure that we advance our city to a high enough level that we can really rely on a steady income, where we can delete and play with things as we wish. One thing we can actually do is change the garbage truck to maybe a new garbage truck from the content creator pack. If we go into first person view, look at that. I'm just going to pause it because I realized we're over top of the coal fire... The holy cow words coal power plant. I thought there was a fire going on while we were over there because I saw the smoke So we're good, but that reminds me Oh wait, we haven't unlocked fire yet That was the next step. So we placed our garbage now We need to really focus on growing the town to the next level And then we can get our fire hall unlocked. So there won't be any fires in the city until then which is really good to know uh, Okay, I'm gonna push the limits of residential for now I think we're getting a getting as close as we can pretty much get. So this is the pollution. So I think maybe we can bring our industry into here before we really start impeding on anything. So let us just do that. There we go. A ton, a ton, a ton of industrial demand. Very interesting to see. We don't really have a lot of commercial. I'm gonna look at starting to get commercial along Sunset Way down into here. I think that would be a good idea. Perhaps this whole block could be commercial. Uh, commercial is best used uh, in a situation like this as a division between industrial and residential. But also because if this if Sunset Way is kind of like the main uh, train line here, the main road that the train is going to be on or off of, it's kind of turning into a bit of a main street, so we want to make sure that we have commercial on that. Uh, perhaps this house will eventually get removed as well. Alrighty, so let's look at getting some more residential. I think we'll be fine if we put residential over here. Let's check out that pollution level. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. That's definitely the limit over on that side. However, we have tons of space over on this side. Uh, we should definitely look at grabbing are pushing this out another grid. Uh, so we're starting to go into the eight by eights, I believe. So while this is a grid, this isn't a perfect grid. And I really like the idea of that. Okay, so we have the park in here. So means we can split that up. Perhaps getting some larger blocks. And maybe we can look at growing this out a little bit more because this is a main road here that does get split up on this side, but it doesn't have to get split up on that side. Alrighty, so let us zone in a bunch more. This is going to be a park. This is going to be prime residential real estate. So we'll throw all that together. We'll take a look at our water. Looks like we're all covered over here, but we're not all covered up here. So let's just bring this out and over. Should be good for now. And we're not exactly covered over on this side. But other than that, we are pretty much covered for what we've zoned. So now it's just a waiting game. Oh, we're on single uh, speed there. Sorry about that. Uh, and hopefully 
we get some more industrial demand here, uh, we'll be able to... I don't mind uh, throwing this here because I don't think we're going to get a bridge or a tunnel right there. So I think we can... safe to say that we can place um, industry over on that side. I'm also comfortable zoning some residential over on this side, but I want to save uh, some space along the rails for perhaps a park. Park along the rails does seem a bit controversial, but it could be nice. Alrighty, so that is eight units. So if you think about this, this is where that road would go. So I think we're going to change up the grid. We'll go right up to here. Hey, look at that. Worthy village. That's fantastic. So we unlocked police, fire, and districts. And a new tile, so we can really start moving along. We also unlocked uh, agriculture and forestry specialization for industry. Uh, that is really good to know because for, uh, farming industry is going to be something that we're really going to uh, utilize. Um, okay. Well, they should have thought about that a bit more. So I'm going to delete this building. Let this rezone into two or one larger building. So that might be the limit of dirty industry that we use in this uh, case, but we look how much industrial demand we have, right? So what I'm going to do is, uh, you know that park idea that I was thinking about? Uh, perhaps we don't necessarily use it all for a park, and we instead use it for some farming industry. So that means we need to create a district. But before I get too far ahead of myself and the city runs into issues, we need a city fire hall. So I'm going to pause the game here. And why is fire more important than police? Well, fire can cause some serious issues and burn down your main buildings. So if a fire catches a power plant, it's going to be gone. And the, that power plant is so expensive, we can't afford to replace it right now. What we can afford to place is a fire hall. If it runs into police issues right away, we can kind of hold off until we get enough money for that police station. But where should a fire station go? Well, in this instance, I think the fire station should be close enough to the industry while also being close enough to the city center that it can do any residential or it can help with any residential fires. So based off of the asset, I think the asset is telling us that it needs to be placed right here. Fantastic. Meanwhile, another garbage truck goes by and then we can also look at adding in, say, a large fire uh, fire truck here. So if you see a fire, uh, we can check out one of the new fire trucks. Alrighty, so we need to look at districts then in the meantime. Now technically we could throw down the, the police station. Uh, we, I, think, I guess we could because we are making a pretty steady amount of income right now. So I want to place down the uh, European themed police station. And the reason why I want to do that is because I think it looks like a very proper building. Uh, especially for this kind of theme. I think we're going to take up an industry space for this. Because I would love if the police station could like back right on to kind of look overlook uh, the train station area. So we're going to place that down. I think I'm going to pause the game. We're going to delete these two buildings. And the reason why is because now we can get some larger, more full buildings here. I'm going to remove that because I think we can perhaps spruce that uh, area up in the future with some landscaping. We don't really need that to be... Ah, in this instance, we could actually, instead, um, we could just move it over one, but that, that costs some money. And then now it's going to be centered in our block, but we can just use move it, which is another featured mod, I guess. Hopefully I didn't mess up the other blocks there. I didn't. That's fantastic. I'm just going to pull it forward a bit. So we centered that now, and now it's going to be a key feature. We can also add a police supercar or a mobile command center, but I think we'll leave the original police cars because I think these police cars look a bit more realistic for the situation that we're in right now. Alrighty, so we're, you know, we're looking pretty good here, but we need to get those districts in place. This is something we unlocked. Uh, we're gonna create two separate districts here. So I'm gonna pause the game. We're gonna look at our definition of our industry, or of our zoning here. So we have commercial over on this side, industry over on this side. This is gonna be the first split. And then here's gonna be, or it's gonna be the main split of our districts. So this is gonna be the industry district. 
Now, the reason why I'm, I'm making this area its own district is because I want to make sure that we can manipulate the policies a bit better. Strawberry Square here is going to come right down into here. And we're going to zone most of this as Strawberry Square. Now, that's not going to stay. Uh, now, the town is called Fort Prairie. Now, I don't believe I really want the name of this town to be Fort Prairie. I want the name of the city to be Fort Prairie. This is a small town that we're building that's going to be on the edge of Fort Prairie. So we need to come up with a, a little name for this town. I think it should be train themed, but not exactly like locomotive town or something like that. Uh, like a, I'm thinking like an old west kind of name. That could be fun. But I think that I'll, I'll leave this up to the community um, because you guys have been so amazing. Uh, you know, this channel has grown so, 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 so much since I started Brockton County, which is uh, our other series that we're building alongside this one, that I would love it if you all could name the first town in this series. So again, the plan for this is to build this into a large town. We're going to start off small, but I kind of see its extent to be this highway over here. Perhaps not too much farther than this. I think we're going to get a division line through here. Perhaps we'll bleed it over uh, across the, the railway here, but it's really not going to be much more than a railway town. So if you have any ideas, please let me know in the comment section down below. Strawberry Square. Uh, anyways, for, for Lilac Park, uh, I think we're just going to name... This isn't going to be really like a town. This is more of a definition of the area. So this is the industry uh, squares. Industry squares, so we're, we're going to leave it at that. And uh, with this area, a really good idea is to throw on the smoke detector distribution. Uh, once this area starts growing up a bit more, I mean, maybe we really need to we'll throw this on, but we don't need to right now, so we're not. But we're going to go into Strawberry Square. Just exit out of this, make sure I'm clicking the right one. Strawberry Square. We're going to go into themes here. We're going to allow themes. We're going to change this to international. Uh, we're also going to allow buildings from European suburbia to pop up in here. But this map is a European based map. I would love it if we could get some, if majority of the buildings uh, were international. All right. So. I don't think I've ever left the first town name up to the community, but I would really love it if uh, we all could kind of come up with a fun name together in the comment section down below uh, for this town. And while we're at that, feel free to name Raymond Drive. Raymond Drive is the main road that runs off into the highway. Uh, along with that, Blake Drive here is going to be named... Whoops. Uh, actually, I think this road, sorry, wrong one, is going to be named Railway Avenue. But Blake Drive also needs a name. This is going to be kind of like Main Street. I think I, I guess Main Street could be a, a good one. But uh, I want to leave that up to you as well. So if you have any name suggestions for this cute little town that we're building, which already has a large building in it, holy cow, uh, let me know. All right, so, um, hmm. I guess next of what I was saying is we were gonna start uh, adding in some farming industry. So that means we need to go into here. We're gonna go into our industrial specialization tabs and we're gonna click this. Uh, and that has added an industrial specialization to this area, farming. And we don't really need to do the other ones. We don't really want to do the other ones. It's not really thematic. So let's start zoning in some industry. And we're gonna start zoning that industry in right here. So we're going to see this pop up. This is non-polluting industry, which is fantastic. I guess we can bring it right up into here. Here we go. We're starting to get a building. Uh, and we can also zone in some residential. So look, we got some cows. We got some grain. I feel like these buildings look really nice right up against a rail line. Look at that. We got a lot of the same, but that's okay with me. At least I'm pretty sure this is non-polluting. 
At least it's not polluting right now. Yeah, I mean, this looks pretty nice. We've got a nice little field over here. It's a good kind of transition industry. All right, well, you know, we've hit our goal today of hitting the first two milestones. We've established where a park's gonna be. We've established where a main train area is gonna be. This road's gonna be deleted right here, I think. We're gonna have Railway Avenue North, Railway Avenue South. Um, and we're gonna have probably like a bump out coming out of the police station into this road. Uh, or at least maybe, maybe like a curve or something like that. We're gonna get the railway in here. We'll figure it out once we get the rail unlocked, but we're quite a little bit of ways from unlocking transport, which is, I guess, the next milestone. Now, we are pretty close to the next milestone. Perhaps we can get right up to the edge of Teeny Town, or at least zone, uh, zone the land that's going to become Teeny Town, because uh, we unlock parks next, industry areas as well, but we're not going to really start with that. Landscaping, which is going to be fun to do. Uh, all these. We unlock some paths, which is going to be nice. Some industry roads, which are really good for themes. Some fences and parks as well, and high school. So it'll be a good time to start looking at our education uh, and healthcare next episode. Uh, I think we can actually look at getting our healthcare in right now before the end of the day. So let us do that. Um, I think we're gonna go. I really like this building. This one seems a bit more realistic in my eye. So we're gonna throw uh, the clinic. Hmm. I don't really want it off the main road. Uh, let's throw it right here. So, sorry, commercial buildings. But that's okay. So, we're going to go with this one. It's a bit more thematic to the build. And we have a lot of demand still. So, we're going to zone that up. We can start looking at zoning here. So, I'm going to throw some zoning uh, right there. I guess we can get zoning right up to here. Is that eight? Yep, there we go. Nope, no, it's not. So this is where we're gonna get zoning. Because I'm not committed to what we're gonna do over there yet. Um, and I guess we can look at also getting zoning right through here. And once the milestone pops, we will end the video. Second, too close, we'll see. Let's connect that up. Check our pollution levels really quickly. Yeah, we're right on the edge, so we might want to watch this block as a potential issue. And there we go, Tiny Town. So we unlocked Tiny Town in, in episode one. And next episode on Friday, we'll look at building a park area and getting, uh, getting education in. That'll be our main goal. And also start expanding this Tiny Town. Oh, we got some water issues. Uh, we'll just fix that before we end the episode. It's not right under the road, but that's that's okay. Uh, so we're gonna build a park next episode. We're gonna expand the town. Look at our first high school, which is probably gonna be over here in the main residential area. Maybe closer to the, the, the railway, I don't know. And we'll get perhaps one, at least, perhaps two uh, resident, uh, holy cow, elementary schools. That's the right word. But anyways, this is how we've kind of zoned our town for now. Uh, it's great that we have unlocked farming industry. That's going to be a primary industry for this area. But that's kind of how it's looked so far. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section down below. Let me know what we should name this town. Uh, this railroad themed small town, an old an old west town that's developed along the railways. Uh, perhaps you can name it after uh, your favorite western, um, like Deadwood. I don't know if Deadwood is exactly the right <laughs> for this, but... Um, I, don't, I hope there's no gunslinging in this town. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the, in the comment section down below what you think. Uh, don't forget, name this road. Name this road. And uh, leave a name suggestion for the town. Uh, I think we'll name the town on next time we go through uh, the cycle. So not on Friday's video, but we'll name the town on Monday's video of the next time Fort Prairie is in the cycle. So. Hope you enjoyed the build, folks. Talk to you soon. There we go. Yeah. That works for me. Peace out.